Good morning, colleagues and friends. My name is Chen Jiliang. I work for an environmental NGO based in Beijing called the Greenovation Hub. It's my great pleasure to share some of our observations on China's participation in Kamala with you. I hope an NGO perspective would be useful for an interesting discussion. I will start my presentation with a brief introduction of Greenovation Hub, then, and then I will give some background of China's participation in Kamala and an analysis or deconstruction of China's position using the negotiation for marine protected area as a, an example. And I will also discuss some domestic difficulties and give some future prospects. A few words about the Green Innovation Hub. It is a young environmental think do organization. Think do means we are not just a think tank. Besides producing researches, we also actively communicate our work to the public and to the policy community. Our working area is basically uh, China's global ecological footprint, which covers issues like climate change, uh, overseas investment, and global ocean governance, including Antarctica. Representing GHUB, I have been participating in the Kamala annual meetings since 2012. I also participated in the UN BBNJ negotiations. The first background I want to talk about is China's Antarctic activities. Since China joined the Antarctic Treaty, China has gradually built up its capacity uh, of Antarctic science and logistics. With rapid growth of its economy since the beginning of this century, China's budget for Antarctic has also increased rapidly. New stations and icebreaker were being built. Uh, we see it is uh, a natural natural result from the rise of China as a global power. Uh, joining Kamala is surprising late, surprisingly late because uh, earlier there was no interest in fishing krill. Uh, talking about the fishing interest, since the opening up and the reform, uh, China's distant water fishing uh, fleet developed uh, rapidly. From the graph, graph in the left, you can see the overall catch of its fleet has been increasing, but the growth rate has uh, stopped growing. In so, in the thirteenth five-year plan, which is uh, covers from the year to twenty uh, sixteen to twenty twenty. China started to put control on its distant water fishing fleet, but the polar fishery is still expecting, expected to grow. Uh, since there is a moratorium of fishing in the Central Arctic Ocean, the Southern Ocean is really seen as a fishery that has the potential to grow. But uh, I want to point out that's just the perspective of the uh, Ministry of Agriculture. So these are seen as the new muscle of China's presence uh, in Antarctica. But the dragons and the, the eagle are much more famous than the fishermen. The blue vessel in the right is the newly built cutting-edge specialized krill fishing vessel owned by the company Sun Life. It will go to the Southern Ocean to do its first test uh, fishing next, uh, next austral summer or autumn. Let's have a look at some of the statistics of China's participation in Kamala. You can see the size of the Chinese delegation has been grow, growing uh, steadily, but the number of the papers submit, submitted to the Commission and to the Scientific Committee hasn't been growing much until this year. This reflects that, uh, that China is investing more in Kamala. However, it is easier to send people, uh, to get people travel to meetings than get them uh, spending time to 
prepare for policy work. It is also true that China is still at the process of learning and formulating its uh, specific positions. But China is quite clear about its principles and concerns when engaging in the Kamala process. Here I use a quick analysis of China's argument in the negotiation for Kamala MPAs uh, to illustrate those principles. So with the fishing interest behind, there are four main principles or philosophies. First is the balance between uh, protection and use. Second is what I call the precautionary approach towards precautionary approach. The third is pragmatism. And the last but not least is the view of the geopolitical power play. So it is the same philosophies that China applies in other international fora. Uh, this is hard to read. I'm happy to share the slides afterwards. I think what part of people is that China always oppose uh, the MPA proposals with generic concerns and uh, not providing specific su suggestions to revise the proposals. From my observation, I think there are few difficulties that prevent uh, China from doing so. First is the absence of an Antarctic uh, tr strategy or Antarctic law. Uh, such documents could give, really give mandate to the delegation and uh, guide their work before and uh, during the meeting. Second is the lack of marine research, because China used to have only one icebreaker and it was burdened with heavy resupply missions, which limited the ship hours for marine research. So there has been very few marine observation that, observation that could support decision making. Uh, the Chinese camera experts are also busy with many other works and also constrained by the uh, administrative rules of traveling. So their capacity in engaging the camera process is limited. For example, it was difficult for them to travel to some extra workshop for on Creole this year. And also, the, the conservation scientists are not involved uh, in the process, which also limits the capacity of the, the, the delegation. On engaging uh, in engaging conservation issues, so camera camera is seen as the competency of the fishing bureau in the Ministry of Agriculture. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs didn't 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 always pay the great attention to this. The Rossi MPA deal was an exception because there was a, a high level instruction. The Polar administration seems uh, having difficulty in positioning itself in the delegation. Looking ahead, uh, uh, new relatives are getting relevant to the Antarctic governance in China. So those uh, political slogans uh, might not have specific meanings, but they do encourage or promote effective governance of the global commons. So with the Polar administration merged into the newly established Ministry for of Natural Resources, more expertise could be brought into uh, Kamala work. And with the new icebreaker and the new station at the Ross Sea, more marine science and the related uh, cooperation could happen. And they will happen. The conference of parties of the CBD in Kunming next year is an opportunity for China to demonstrate its leadership in biodiversity conservation. And that will also give China a push to think hard about what they should do at Kamala. Uh, those two meetings could happen parallelly at the same time uh, next year. And there is a new 
five-year plan coming up, we expect there will be further reform of the distant uh, wi uh, water fishery. To summarize, China is an important player in Kamala. China, China's core position at Kamala are consistent to its positions in other international fora. The Antarctic Treaty System context is not properly recognized in the delegation. China is becoming more active in Kamala, while there are still a few internal systematic obstacles that prevent it from becoming more constructive. And given some time, uh, China has the potential to become a more constructive contributor to Kamala. So I thank you for your attention and I look forward to the discussion.